When my brother passed, obviously that was a very deep emotional wound for me. He had special needs and I assisted him quite often. And there was a little bit of guilt from my side that I wasn't there at the moment of his passing. And I needed more time to process that than I likely would have if I had been there or if there was a little more notice because it was a quick passing. You held a space of empathy for me and allowed me to have as much time as I needed to navigate through the emotions that I was holding. However, you also had to hold a boundary that I didn't take time that you needed during critical focus hours in order to process my grief or any of the other. I have a friend again. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he just really wants to be on the podcast with us. This is the second time we've had a little friend come in and say hi. Um, but there were times when the emotion would hit me out of nowhere. That's how grief occurs for anyone who has processed grief. It's not exactly like grief goes, oh, she's free from this time to this time on this day. Yeah. So I will pencil in and we'll, we'll make sure that it processes during that time. No, grief doesn't do that. Grief will just come and wham, there I am. And so we could be sitting there doing our daily work and I would be like, I don't even understand what's happening right now. I just have this feeling. But you had to hold a boundary of, I understand. And I am not rushing you through what you're feeling. But I have to focus on this. You process, I'm placing no pressure on you to continue working right now. You do what you need to do. But if we're going to meet the deadline we have, I have to focus on this. That accomplished both things. I had room to process. I didn't feel pressured by you to not process what I was feeling in order to continue what we were doing. But you held the clear boundary of, I can't stop what I'm doing in order to pivot. Yeah. It's, thank you for sharing that and for seeing that way. And the reason why this works for us is because we clearly communicate our boundaries and we know that going in. And so it's so, it's so critical because when things happen, like they're going to happen things in life are going to happen and, and they're going to come out of nowhere. And oftentimes we're not going to even know how to deal with it. And so having a partner that is there to support and, and, and help us and have empathy and, and show us that type of love is so important. Um, but, but the goal on either side, you know, if something happens to me my goal is never to bring you down with that process or, um, or push your boundaries where you're no longer able to be the very best version of yourself. Because honestly, when I'm in those moments, I need the very best version of you. And so if I'm tearing your boundaries down and not allowing you to be the fullest extent, then I'm the one who, not, we both, I don't want to come out that way. Um, we both, like, uh, like I, I suffer through it, you suffer through it, and then we both suffer through it, right? right. And so neither of us are, are, are benefiting from that process. And so that's why it's important to have boundaries because we're not saying, like, hey, in any blanket situation when your partner's going through something that they can treat you poorly or tear you down. Or do you, no, that's not part of this. This is not roll over. This is be there, have empathy, understand where they are, love them, but also hold the boundaries that you both have shared. And if there are new ones, because sometimes things are going to come up. This is the first time that this came up in our relationship. And, right. and so you know, during the time, 
we actually set kind of new, we set new boundaries and we shared where we were at and we had to hold that space. And so you held empathy for me, recognizing like, hey, like if this were, if that hadn't happened, this is where we would be. And we do need to have these things accomplished. But that doesn't negate your feelings in any way. Like you should be allowed to have those feelings and flow through. And so, yeah, it did allow a, a symbiosis of that experience uh, where we both felt fulfilled, loved, cared for, seen, heard, gotten, all the all that stuff, right? And then allowed us to move through it. Um, and what happens is I feel that it's this snowball effect over time is that these boundaries aren't shared, then empathy starts to wane, and then trust starts to get broken because we're not being honest about the situation, we're not being consistent, and so what happens is, is, is people, couples start to tear each other down. The mm -hmm. communication becomes all about, you know, gotcha, or, you know, let me tear you down, or, or you know, let me build myself up by putting you down. How could and, you not know yeah. I'm grieving about my brother? Why would you not stop? Yeah. yeah. Like this, you should just expect that I'm in this place. Yeah, e exactly. Expectation of where we're at instead of actually mm -hmm. taking the time to communicate. And so that's why we want to bring this forward and talk about like building trust is so important, but maintaining the trust is just as important. And, and it's, it's why after 10 years, we don't fall into these traps of tearing each other down and disrespecting each other and then expecting us to just know what the other is talking like we're some kind of mind reader. Like, no, these aren't, this isn't, that's not real. And, and you shouldn't, I shouldn't expect you to know always where I'm at just because, just because we live together, we work together, we're best friends, we do everything together. That doesn't mean you just know everything about me all the time. Like, I don't even know everything about me. Exactly. Like I still have so much, I have my whole life to learn about me. So I can't expect you to just know everything about me. Yeah. That's unfair. And that's not loving. That is not empathetic. That is not consistent. That is not honest.